Gurk or G Yerk uh, says to acquire grammar, would it be effective to create my own sentences with the grammar I know? Yes, it is. But the problem is you can be wrong. So you got to be careful there. If you're going to create sentences, make sure you have someone vet them. Uh, vet them in AI if you need to, okay? If you don't have a Japanese friend, vet them. Uh, another thing that's really effective that I've seen people do is they take native sentences that they hear in their anime or in their TV shows, and they put those sentences raw, the full sentence, inside of an Anki deck. And then they're studying the word in the context that they learned it with that sentence. The way that I do it, is I, I call things beacon sentences. I take like a beacon sentence. It's like, you know what? Uh, or you could call it a lighthouse sentence too. Like if you're lost in the ocean, you look for a lighthouse so you don't crash on the shore. We're going back hundreds of years before there was GPS and computers. But just if you're lost, you look for that lighthouse. So when I learn a new grammar construct in any language, I try to learn a simple sentence. And for me, it's always involving girls, always. If you watched me learn Spanish on the Polyglot George channel, Actually, no, I didn't put those up. I didn't put those up. But if you watch me watch, learn any language, I tend to make every sentence about girls. Those are always my beacon sentences, okay? It's like, I'm learning Spanish because Spanish girls are hot. And that's how I learn, for example, because. Like how to connect a compound sentence, right? That's my beacon sentence. And then later on, if I want to say something more complicated, like, um, I can't go with you today because I lost my passport on the ferry boat on the way to some island, you know, I, I have that same beacon sentence and I can just switch out the things around it and still know how that because works. And I do that in Korean a lot. In Korean, their verb types, the way that you have to conjugate their verbs, there's certain rules, right? And I sometimes forget like, oh, wait a minute, what is, how do, but I have, I have a beacon verb. I have like a verb. I have two verbs that I use as representatives, okay? Uh, for example, we could do that. We could do that in Japanese. We could have a verb that we use as a representative of an iru eru verb, taberu. Taberu, you, you know, tabemas. You know that word so well that anytime you get another iru eru verb, you just copy what you do with the beacon verb, the lighthouse verb, taberu. And you just copy what you did with that. Same thing with iku. Iku to, to go could be your beacon verb. And then any other verb that ends in ku ever, if it ends in a ku, you always do the same thing. If it ends in a mu, you use yomu as your beacon. Like you use, you get really good at one verb that does that, for example. There's all sorts of beacons you could put in your head, lighthouses that help you navigate when you're lost on this dark ocean of Japanese. Because I'm gonna tell you right now, when you're in a live conversation, anything goes. They're not speaking textbook Japanese. So you have to look for lighthouses. You have to be open, not open, that's not the word I'm looking for. You have to look for something that you understand and, and grab that and then keep the conversation going with that. It's not the same as studying. Studying Japanese is only the scaffolding around your house. It's not the house. You have to build those skills by doing it. 